Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a very strange mystery that quietly broke a lot of astrophysical records in 2023. And the kind of mystery in this case that left physicists scratching their heads because they really had no idea what could have caused all of this. And here we're talking about the event officially known as KM3 230213A, an event detected by a network referred to as KM3 Net. A massive underwater neutrino detector located extremely close to the coast of Italy that on February 13th, 2023 captured something very strange. The most energetic neutrino particle we've ever detected anywhere and a particle that was so powerful that it made absolutely no sense, despite the fact that we've been detecting neutrinos for a very long time. But to understand why this was so bizarre and to understand what this could potentially be, let's I guess cover some of the basics first and discuss some of the fundamental science. And by the way, if you want to learn more about the event itself and what some of the previous propositions involved, you can learn about this in some of the videos in the description. And so first of all, neutrinos. These are technically the most mysterious fundamental particles known to us and the particles that we still don't understand very well. And they are elementary particles, kind of like electrons and protons. But in this case, they have no electric charge and an incredibly tiny mass, but exactly how much, we're still not sure. But what makes them mysterious and super bizarre is that they don't really like to interact with matter almost at all. As a matter of fact, as I'm talking to you right now, there are like billions and billions of them streaming through your body every single second. And we don't feel them at all. And so that's one of these crazy facts about the neutrinos that most people forget. And that's because when it comes to interaction with matter, they only do so through what's known as the weak force which makes them incredibly difficult to catch and to detect. And that's why researchers created these massive detectors, with the biggest and the most well-known one being ice cube neutrino located in Antarctica. But a few years back, researchers created a new one, KM3NET, which stands for Cubic Kilometer Neutrino Telescope, a European facility under the ocean off the coast of Sicily. And just like other neutrino detectors, here it works on a very simple principle. When one of these billions and billions of neutrinos finally interacts with something, it usually creates another particle, and most often this particle is a muon. And muons are very well known to us, and we can usually detect them pretty well, mostly because they love interacting with stuff and produce a lot of light as they do so. And so as a neutrino produces a muon, the muon then zooms through the water, producing a visible burst of light. This is what we refer to as a chirang of radiation. But intriguingly, the more powerful the neutrino, the more powerful the muon, and the more light it tends to produce. And so if by chance we discover something that's actually kind of bright and produces a lot of photons, it means that this was a very powerful neutrino. And that's what happened on February 13th, 2023. The ARCA detector that operated 21 detection units discovered something super bizarre. In a very tiny time frame of approximately 2 microseconds, suddenly this detector registered 28,000 photons, with the sheer amount of light being absolutely ridiculous. And it was actually so bright that approximately 25% of all of these detectors were completely blinded and oversaturated. And when scientists tried to figure out what could have produced this, they realized that if this was a muon, it must have had an energy of 120 peta electron volts. That's about 100 trillion times higher than any visible light photon. But because it was expected to have been produced by a neutrino, the neutrino must have been even more powerful at 220 peta electron volts, or approximately 22 times higher than previous record holder. But that's not the only mysterious part. Also, the path of this neutrino was a little bit bizarre. Here, by reconstructing its trajectory, they discovered that it was moving almost perfectly horizontally, suggesting that this neutrino must have traveled through a lot of water and also a lot of crust, basically moving through the Mediterranean Sea and a lot of Mediterranean rock prior to producing this muon and producing these emissions. Which means that it could not have come from the upper atmosphere and could not have been just the result of some kind of a cosmic ray, as these types of muons are usually absorbed much quicker. And so this had to have come from really deep space. For example, really far away quasars and blazers and some really powerful objects somewhere out there. Or at least that was the assumption at first, although when they traced the trajectory to see if there's anything in that region, 
there was basically nothing, making this one of the biggest astronomical mysteries in the last few years. And that's actually the mysterious part as well, because normally, when we find these very powerful neutrinos, by tracing the trajectory, it becomes possible to see some of the most powerful colossal cosmic accelerators usually blazers. So these supermassive black holes that serve as some of the most powerful particle accelerators in the entire universe. But nothing was discovered in this case. So this was very likely not some kind of a standard powerful source. What could it be then? Well, there have been some propositions, including what's known as the cosmogenic neutrino, or basically an interaction with ultra-powerful cosmic rays and some kind of a background light from the universe, but because the chances of this happening are extremely low, at the moment this was not the best explanation, with the additional problem being sensitivity. As in technically, KM3 net is not as sensitive as the ice cube neutrino in Antarctica. And so if one of them saw something so powerful coming from some kind of a blazer or even from a cosmogenic neutrino, why did the other one see nothing? Statistically speaking, we actually expect way more of these neutrinos to be visible to ice cube and not came 3 net which led at least a few scientists to consider exotic explanations, with at least one of these explanations we discussed before, linking this to some kind of a mysterious dark matter annihilation that might have produced some of these signals. But today I wanted to focus on this new explanation that's even kind of more exotic, but to some extent even more exciting. A study by Alexander Klipfel and David Kayser proposes something slightly different. This burst of radiation could have come from an evaporating primordial black hole, or basically a tiny black hole that finally reached its final days and kind of exploded, producing these enormous amounts of radiation. And surprisingly, that's technically something we've been looking for for a very long time, and something that was originally proposed by Stephen Hawking. Because he was the first to propose that black holes technically evaporate, and at some point when they become really small, the evaporation rate increases so much that they essentially kind of explode. I think there's an older video somewhere in the description that discusses this concept a little bit more. But obviously, primordial black holes are still very hypothetical. We've never seen them anywhere, despite the fact that a lot of explanations assume that they might have been created mere moments after the creation of the universe. And because Stephen Hawking's proposition involved something referred to as the Hawking radiation, or basically that all black holes start to evaporate, but small black holes evaporate much faster, if we actually find some kind of a really tiny primordial black hole, it's technically going to be producing a lot of really powerful emissions that should technically be relatively easily visible. And so, at least mathematically speaking, any primordial black hole with the mass of some kind of a smaller asteroid would eventually evaporate completely in an enormous bright explosion. Something that would actually only last a fraction of a second, and something that would turn a bunch of particles including neutrinos, into very powerful radiation. And if primordial black holes are real, and if they do exist, they can also explain a huge chunk of the invisible dark matter, which was once again Stephen Hawking's initial proposition. And so interestingly, based on this study, if primordial black holes do represent a large fraction of this mysterious dark matter, then this event can technically be very consistent with the expected radiation coming from a nearby primordial black hole explosion. But once again, there's that question of, why this detector and why not the ice cube? And there's a super intriguing answer to that as well. Based on this hypothesis, if this was a primordial black hole explosion, it would have to have occurred very close to Earth for it to be only detected by one of the detectors and not the other one. Specifically, it had to be within 2000 astronomical units, which is of course within the Oort cloud and within the boundaries for the solar system. And so if any of this is correct, this will be the first ever observational evidence for the existence of Hawking radiation and of course for the existence of these exploding primordial black holes. But importantly, this detection is also exciting based on another scientific prediction that was only released a few days back. Here, a study by Michael Baker calculated that there is a 90% chance that we should actually be seeing exploding primordial black holes in the next 14 years. So basically, based on the assumption that they do exist, and that at least one of them is going to explode at some point in the past, there's a 90% chance that we're going to see the light coming from this black hole by approximately 2038. And so basically here we have two independent studies kind of connecting the same idea and the same principle. One study suggests that we should be seeing these primordial black holes if they do exist, and one study suggests that we might have just seen one, because otherwise explaining this neutrino is extremely challenging. And so, theoretically, we might have just discovered this anticipated event. And obviously detecting even one of these events would be completely revolutionary. You would obviously confirm the existence of primordial black holes, 
proven Stephen Hawking's propositions completely, but it would also suggest that Hawking radiation actually produces energy, and at least a few of these primordial black holes seem to be hidden right here in the solar system. And in some of the older videos we discussed the idea behind a potential source of unlimited energy if we could actually find one of these black holes right here in the solar system. Because in theory, extracting energy from these black holes is possible and can lead to extremely powerful energy generators. And on top of this we had this older explanation for the existence of Planet 9 as also maybe some kind of a primordial black hole as well. Although in that case it was a little bit larger, so it would unlikely to emit as much radiation. But either way, the detection of KM3 230213A so far led to quite a lot of exciting propositions, with this single detection basically opening a lot of doors for a lot of new propositions and possibly even new physics. But whether this came from some kind of a mysterious distant cosmic accelerator, some kind of a strange cosmogenic source that we don't understand, or a tiny black hole that evaporated right here in the solar system, we're unlikely to know anytime soon. Because at the moment we only have this single detection and we just don't have enough data and information to answer any of these questions. So basically here we'll have to detect more of these particles and very likely try to trace them back to where they came from before we can make additional conclusions and before we can discover what's really going on here. Either way though, this was definitely one of the strangest detections in the last few decades and one of the biggest mysteries in astrophysics. But because this particular detector is currently being upgraded, and the upgraded version is going to be able to detect the direction of particles with a lot more accuracy, in the future, if something similar is seen again, researchers will be able to pinpoint the exact location much better. And so at least for now, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see if we can maybe discover something else just as mysterious and just as powerful. Which means that the search for the definitive answer still continues. And until we know more or until something else is discovered, that's I guess all I wanted to mention. Check out previous videos and previous propositions in some of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining the channel membership it grants you early access and a few secret videos. Additionally, you can also buy the wonderful present t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.